The rule of three suggests anything that comes in threes should be inherently more satisfying and effective than other numbers of things. And the third version of things always tend to be the best. Just look at films. You've got Return of the Jedi, Goldfinger, and my personal favorite, Toy Story 3. So this all bodes well for the car we have here, the third generation of the Mazda 3. The problem it has though, is the company that it keeps. The latest Mazda released, the 6, made a massive styling statement. I'm gonna be a little bit controversial here by saying the 3 doesn't have that same standout impact. In fact, I think medium hatchback design is all blending into one at the moment. An untrained eye could confuse this from a distance for a Kia Seed or a 2014 Peugeot 308. The grille and headlight design is incorporated from the 6. It's almost like it's got a cheeky grin on its face and is a strong recognition point for the brand in line with the CX-5 too. The lower part of the grille has an auto shutting system to make it more aerodynamic but is only available on higher spec models. This low body indent rising up the profile along with the window line makes the car look more sporty but is a little bit like the Alfa Giulietta in my opinion. Round the back it's chunky and boxy. Now this window line is quite high which does reduce rear visibility. But what we do like is that the boot door splits the rear lights. This means that it doesn't impede on the width of the boot aperture. Now the boot is 350 litres. That's smaller than a Golf, but bigger than a Focus. But it's a long way off the 477 litres offered by the class leader, the Civic. Terminator 3. That was shocking. Those of you after a bigger loading space can go for the saloon version, or fastback as Mazda is calling it, which has a claimed 419 litre boot. While German and Korean opposition have made massive advances, Japanese interior design has stood still a little recently. The latest Civic is almost unchanged inside, and the newest Toyota Auris looks like it has an interior from the mid-90s. But this isn't the case with the Mazda 3. All the leather finishing and soft touch plastics are of good quality. All the switch gear and main function buttons are in easy reach and they've designed the interior so it's less distracting to use. Even the control function for the infotainment system is set so you don't have to move from the driving position to use it. It doesn't quite feel as special as a Mercedes A-Class or an Audi A3, but the tablet style freestanding display in high spec models looks really good. The chrome finishing isn't too tinny to touch, and top spec sport versions get a head-up display, though this is on a fold-up piece of plexiglass. I really like the driving position, with Mazda placing the steering wheel further down. The seats are really supportive and comfortable, especially around the back area, which is great on long, tedious motorway journeys. It feels roomy up front, and Mazda says this is because the 3 has got the longest wheelbase in its class, as you can see, in the back there's plenty of headroom and there's loads of legroom. And even though these side windows are quite small, it doesn't feel too claustrophobic here. Jaws 3D. That was really bad, wasn't it? That was really bad. The model we're driving is a 2.2 diesel. The power delivery is linear and very smooth but it doesn't quite feel as quick as rivals around the same point at about 150 brake horsepower, like the Golf. And Mazda's also gone to a great length to improve the interior noise. They reworked the sound damping in the dashboard and in the floor mats and even in the boot. This 2.2 diesel engine is still very noisy. There's a distinct engine grumble, especially when you're accelerating hard. And what I do really like is the steering. Mazda says this is derived from the MX-5 sports car along with the six-speed manual transmission. It's really sharp, really nicely weighted and involving to drive. The Ford Focus is the front-wheel drive driver's choice at the moment, but I think the Mazda 3 will give it a real run for its money. But what's really surprised me is the ride quality. Now you can tell it's firm and been set up for a sporty drive, but the damping's really good. It seems to soak up all the ruts on these quite bumpy Spanish roads. It'll be interesting to see how well it performs back in the UK. 
Back to the Future 3, that was, that was just like the first one. So it looks like Mazda has a really strong formula on its hands. The looks will almost certainly prove popular. It's got great driving dynamics that are fed through from sporty models like the MX-5, and the ride is surprisingly supple for how well this thing handles. The big question for UK buyers will be around the higher capacity engines. It'll be interesting to see if they'll go for these instead of the lower capacity turbo versions like the Ford Focus 1 litre EcoBoost petrol and the Golf TDI Blue Motion models. This latest generation drives just as well as the rivals and is just as practical. Uh, Jurassic Park 3, the Transformers 3, they were both awful. Uh, the Mazda 3 is definitely a third part in a trilogy that won't disappoint. Click the links to read our full review on the previous Mazda 3, to get all test scores for the current generation of the Ford Focus, and to find out more about all the other medium cars the new Mazda 3 goes up against.